Don't you think it's time for the city of Savannah to have an honest tourism management plan? Let SCAB start paying its fair share? And the hospitality industry needs to increase its wages? The impacts of new growth should not cost residents. All local elected officials on council and commission should have term limits. We're working hard to accomplish these policies. We need your help. Please contribute whatever you can, five, 10 or $20, by going to bettersavannah.org. Donate. Thank you. The following show and broadcast is a production of Better Savannah, an independent expenditure committee dedicated to better policy outcomes at the state and local level. The views, opinions, and statements made by the hosts and or their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of Better Savannah. What's up, buddy? Merry Christmas. Happy belated Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah, yeah. Merry yeah. New Year. It's uh, Saturday, December the 18th. Yeah, so almost 80 degrees. On, uh, I know. Almost 80 degrees. Global warming, full effect. I yeah. uh, thought we'd hop on here for a bit of a members-only episode. I'll, I'll shoot a preview out these first few minutes uh, to the public later on. But wanted to just kind of have a nice little end of the year chat about what's probably one of the most important uh, political races, uh, and that being the races for school board. We got new maps. We got a lot of new names, some old names, and, you know, a lot to talk about. But but first, I just wanted to catch up and, you know, the city passed uh, what everybody is calling a, a historic budget. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is a better budget than prior budgets. So uh, I have to... Uh, I have to say I'm not completely satisfied, but I'm more satisfied than I have been in the past, which is a good thing. I want to I want to just tell the viewing public on this little mini preview here and, and our members who are watching today, like this budget to me, the city of Savannah is reflective of Jay Melder being hired. You know, yep. I, I think if Jay Melder had not been hired, hmm. uh, I think I think you, you would have seen a budget that was far less investing in the public and far more investing, you know, ensuring I, I up. I, I couldn't agree more. Michael Brown or Pat Monahan would have done business as usual. Yes. Sliced out tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to the people that least and, and industries that least need it. So uh, kudos to Jay Melder and kudos to this council for hiring him. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, uh, you know, there's 28 full-time equivalent positions being put in sanitation to quote unquote, you know, go after the lanes. Uh, you know, all city workers are going to be making at least $15 an hour. Uh, you know, well, my, my criticisms are that, you know, it, it's easy to go to $15 an hour a year and some months into the tightest labor market in modern history. Right. Yeah, like, the, the, like, I mean, everybody's paying fifteen an hour now. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, 
for, for as much as the uh, new budget is an improved budget, yeah. this council still suffers from the lagging effects of being slow to implement their policies. The $15 an hour is a good example. That mm-hmm. could have been done two years ago. The Delaware Center, the Grant Center, which they just broke ground on a week ago now, another SPLOS project. You know, these are these are uh, dreams deferred for sure. Yeah, Broughton Street Redevelopment, Street God. Space Project. It was um, going to be done by April, remember? April well, of what year? Maybe 2024. No, they're saying next year, 2022. I we'll, doubt it. Well, of course not. But that's I the sort of sin that uh, they put out. And when they, yeah. in, in March or April next year, they're, they're going to say, well, it, it's going to be another couple of months. And nobody will nobody will remember that they said it was going to be done in, in April. Right. I just so, want to put up on the screen here real quick. All right. You know, the other big thing out of this budget uh record 19.1 million dollar housing investment you know and and i want to take some credit here you know with better savannah i think we pushed this issue hard the last year but we're not the only ones no uh the just coalition uh of faith leaders and congregants um was rather aggressive 26 churches pushing yeah. You know, they wanted a $10 million minimum investment and they got it. They got it, you yeah. know? So, so, I, you know, we hadn't really put a dollar figure, you know, I think we're kind of, again, more focusing on the structural imbalances. You know, we can't talk about affordable housing without having impact fees on market rate housing and commercial and hotels and stuff. So, you know, we're, 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 we're more kind of, you know, you know, looking, you know, at the, at the bigger picture often, but, you know, well, this is uh, this budget is heavily subsidized by $55 million of ARPA money. We're not going to have that money next year. We did not roll back the millage rate, so we raised another $5 million from the digest. That number is likely to be $10 million next year. I have a feeling that Savannah citizens are, are going to want to keep this equivalent of service level, and they're going to have to pay for it. I think this is a preview of next year's budget battle right now, John. Well, I, I just want to say it's true that we did not put a figure to affordable housing. However, we did put a figure to the SCAD pilot program. You're reading my mind, buddy. Yeah. So it's not that we're not comfortable uh, attaching numbers, levels of investment to policies that we advocate for. It's just that we uh, uh, we don't do it in every circumstance. So for those of you listening on the podcast apps, the second article I just want to talk briefly about before we welcome our guests. This happened the other day, John, big unveiling, the mayor, city manager, you know, surprisingly, the district alderman, not there. I do think that's important. Uh, SCAD unveils Pulaski House, 22 units aimed at non-student downtown low wage workers. So this is what are the commercial I played at the top of tonight's uh, to this afternoon show. Uh, you know, this is the SCAD taking out affordable housing and returning 10% of it back to the public. Uh, and and they're, they're heroes. Well, your thoughts? Uh, I, I, I think it was a very calculated and to us, you know, inside baseball people, uh, it's totally transparent. We see what they're doing. Uh, the general public, not so much. Um, they don't spend as much time as as we, you know, uh, do, uh, rightfully or wrongfully. So yeah, it it was a PR stunt uh, because of course sure. they, they they took down 233 affordable housing units and gave us back 22. In no universe is is that. A circumstance to be exalted and praised um, for for diminishing affordable housing, but you know that it's a PR game and and they're playing it. Well, you know, speaking of PR game, I just wanna I just wanna pull up a couple of the Facebook uh, threads that emanated out of this announcement. This is from Scad's own Facebook page, just the Facebook page. From the big reveal at the lofts of Pulaski, 
A lot of comments. Mine very much number one. Uh, pay your fair share. You would not need to make headlines. I just, I just want to blow this up real quick. You know, if, 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 if you are viewing audience is so, uh, oh, wrong button here. F 11. You are viewing audience is so, uh, engaged. You may want to go respond. So SCAD not really liking the negative feedback online. Uh, posted, SCAD values your concern about our community. Please contact SCADServe at scad.edu to engage with us further. You know, uh, I just think anybody who agrees with us, uh, we have already engaged with them. Many others have tried. Uh, we spoke with several people this week, John, you and I, that have been working on this issue. And, you know, the conversations continue, but I think, again, pressure from the, the, the citizens of Savannah um, is the only thing that's going to ultimately lead to, to a pilot program. Well, before we get over to our guests, yes. uh, I just want to say that the, the real real on this is best measured by our original post of 10 days ago uh, when we unveiled the fair share pilot program. And 21,000 people saw that. And I would say 80% would agree of, with that. of the comments agreed that it was time for SCAD to enter a pilot program and pay their fair share. So they can talk about a shining city on a hill and... And, and they should. Look, I mean, again, this is supposed to be the Harvard of art of the South, the, the, the Juilliard of the South. Right. You know, yeah. like, you know, these these world class nonprofit university institutions, they historically enter into these pilot agreements. So all we're really doing here is calling on SCAD to join the ranks of other world class nonprofit education institutions, which have already entered into a pilot program with their host cities. It's as simple as that. So with that, I want to just turn and uh, you know welcome our guests to the program. Uh, she is the 8th District School Board member for the Savannah Chatham County Public School System, uh, running for re-election in the eighth, the new 8th District with new maps. Uh, Dr. Tanya Howard Hall, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. Hello. Well, we know nothing about the schools. Uh, I, yeah, I mean... You know, we, we, it's not that we know nothing. You know, Tanya, you are a school board member. You've been around this and you worked in the education system for your career. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have children in the school system. We, you know, many people kind of start there that you don't have kids in the school system. Therefore, your opinion doesn't matter. Uh, so we have like historically tried to shy away from the school board system uh, and its political races. Uh, but this year feels like a little different of a year that that you know we may want to actually keep an eye on uh and, and and take a take a look at what what are your perceptions with the last 12 months or so coming through the worst of covid and kind of this outbreak of what i would call nothing less than just a conservative outcry on on you know pseudo social political issues and, and kind of turning at your turning out at your meetings you know how how are you guys handling that? Well, most definitely we've had some polarizing issues and objectives and um, irate demonstrations, I, I would say across the country. Um, you know, since the pandemic, people been, you know, they have been stressful and, and the big issue is to mask or not to mask. And you have the silent majority who believe that we should but you have the the um, outgoing minority who feel that we should. 